The following webinar is going to cover the reclassification and using alternative procedures for permit required confined spaces or PRCS. PRCS standards can be found under 29 CFR 1910.146 and 29 CFR 1926.1200 through 1213. My name is PJ Borowski and I've been with Kentucky Safe for 10 years as an industrial hygienist. If you have any questions concerning PRCS or reclassification or alternative procedures, please contact me at 502-229-9765 or at the above email address. Before we go over reclassifying permit required confined spaces or using alternative means to enter PRCS, let's cover the definition of a permit required confined space. First, for a space to meet the definition of a confined space, it has to meet all three of these requirements. The space has to be large enough to bodily enter and perform assigned work, has limited or restricted means of entry and exit, and is not designed for continuous employee occupancy. A permit required confined space is a space that meets all the requirements of a confined space plus one or more of the following attributes contains or has the potential to contain a hazardous atmosphere, contains a material that can engulf an entrant, has an internal configuration that could trap or asphyxiate an entrant, or contains any other recognized serious safety or health hazards. The two standards we will focus on when dealing with reclassification and alternative means are the PRCS standards from 29 CFR 1910, general industry, and 29 CFR 1926, construction. General industry type entries are entries that involve preventative maintenance, service calls, cleaning, and schedule replacement or repair of equipment inside of a space. Construction type entries involve any type of construction or upgrading the existing equipment inside of the space. Once an employer determines they have a permit required confined space that employees could enter to perform assigned work, they must follow all the requirements under 29 CFR 1910-146. However, if an employer can reclassify permit required confined space, they can make the entry safer for the employees and not be required to follow certain elements of the standard. An employer may reclassify a space if they can determine there is no possibility of a hazardous atmosphere inside the space. To determine this, an employer must prove no hazardous atmosphere is present by conducting air sampling inside the space during the entry and establishing historical air sampling data for proof. Also, the employer must be able to lock out, tag out, or eliminate all physical hazards within the space. For reclassification, OSHA still requires the following actions to be conducted prior to entry. An employer must make sure it's safe to remove the entrance cover, document all the hazards and how they are eliminated in, the, in a reclassification document, provide entrance with the reclassification document prior to entry and ensure they have received training on how to safely enter and perform work inside a permit re required confined space. The reclassification documentation should discuss the location of the space, lockout points which would eliminate the hazards, historical air sampling results, the date the reclassification documentation was created and certified and the signature of the person who certified the recertification. This document should be used as a checklist for entrance prior to entering the permit required confined space. The main benefit of reclassification is that it eliminates hazards inside the space, which would make the entry safer for employees. If you have a permit required confined space that you can reclassify, these spaces do not need to be covered in the company's permit required class space program as PRC spaces. Entry permits are not needed and the employer does not need to meet the standard regulations on its specified employee duties and the employer would not need to have rescue services available. For a review, all an employer is required to have is the reclassification documentation, provide training to the employees on how to eliminate the hazards within the space and how to work safely during the entry and have historical air sampling data proving no hazardous atmosphere exist. Next, we will cover alternative means. At no time is an employer allowed to combine alternative means with reclassification and general industry type entries. 
However, this is allowed in construction type entries under alternative means, 29 CFR 1926.1203G. An employer may use alternative means if the only hazard inside the space is atmospheric. If this is the case, and if the employer can use forced air ventilation throughout the duration of the entry, which allows atmospheric conditions to remain acceptable, alternative means can be used. If any physical hazard is located inside the space, then alternative means entries cannot be used in general industry type settings. In construction type entries, the employer is allowed to eliminate or lock out hazards and still make entries under alternative means. If an employer is doing this, they still need documentation that at least identifies the hazards and the ways to eliminate them and provide employees with training on how to enter and perform their work safely. If employees are entering permit required confined spaces under alternative means, they need to conduct initial air monitoring prior to the entry and continuous air monitoring during the duration of the entry. Continuous forced air ventilation must be used during the entry. Employers are required to provide their employees with training on what acceptable entry conditions are, how to properly use ventilation and air monitoring equipment, and safe work practices inside the permit required confined space during the entry. The benefits of using alternative means is similar to the benefits of reclassification. Making entries under alternative means makes the entry and the work inside the permit required confined space safer. For entries into spaces where alternative means is used, permits are not needed, the employer does not need to establish specified employee duties, and rescue services are not required. Again, providing in-depth training on how to make alternative procedure type entries safely is a required element. Also, the employer should create a document explaining what type of equipment is going to be used during these types of entries and what acceptable entry conditions are. Above are some references to general industry and construction standards for permit required confined spaces, as well as the OSHA overview pages for both industries. Also, free online training, which covers permit required confined spaces, can be found at the Kentucky Safe website. This concludes my webinar on using reclassification and alternative procedures for confined spaces. If you have any questions concerning this topic, please contact me by phone or email.